All right, so we're going to be doing the problems from the uh, sum and difference identities, half angle, double angle identities, and also some from the old days. So we want to know, this is a true or false question, we want to know if this, the way this is set up, if this is true, that cosine of negative 20 equals 50, cosine 50, cosine 30, plus sine 50, sine 30. So what I notice here is I got a cos cos with a plus sign between them. So if I go back to my identity sheet, when I have cos cos, cos cos with a plus sign, that means you're supposed to have the cosine of the first angle, the U angle, which goes here and here, minus the V angle, which is the second angle in line here and here. So I want to know, does this, does this thing translate back to this for that problem we just looked at? So if you look, and there's a plus sign here for cosine, you got a minus sign. So I'm going to come over here real quick and I'm going to say, well, this has to be cosine of 50 minus 30 because it's U, this is your U here and here, and these are your V's. So it's 50 minus 30, so this is the cosine of 20 degrees. Now, this is kind of a tricky problem here. This is kind of a tricky problem here because you might say false. Well, this one is actually going to end up being true. It kind of goes back to the unit circle here. The cosine of 20 degrees, let's say this is 20 degrees right here. This is going to be some x and some y value, correct? Okay. Negative 20 is going clockwise, so that's down here like this, negative 20 degrees, which this would reflect over the x-axis. So is there going to be a difference in how far I come out to the right to go up or go down? Is the x going to change? And the answer is no, your x would be identical. And so this is actually a true statement, and I'm going to tell you why. Another way we could get this to be a true statement is this. There's a commutative property of multiplication that says a times b equals b times a. In other words, if I take 2 times 3, that is the same as taking 3 times 2. It does not matter what order you multiply numbers in, they're always equal. That is called the commutative property of multiplication. So why negative 20 also works on this is these two things multiply together is we could have rewritten that as cosine 30 times cosine 50 and then plus, and we could flip-flop these two, sine 30 and sine 50. Because if you flip-flop them, just like this commutative property, they're still equal. So if we rewrote this like this, then this would be the cosine of 30 minus 50, which also is the cosine of negative 20 degrees. So the cosine of negative 20 is equal to the cosine of positive 20 because of our unit circle here. Okay, so that's a pretty difficult problem to get that right. Some of you might have put false and then change that to positive 20, but it's actually true because it works for both. Any questions on that problem? That's a pretty tough problem. Now, this might not like, have anything to do with it, but why is it in parentheses? Why is what in parentheses? Well, negative 20. Oh, oh, because if I wrote it like this, the reason this negative 20 is in parentheses, if I wrote it like this, and some right. people might think that says cosine minus 20 instead of the cosine of negative 20 degrees. So whenever you have a negative with a trig function, we always put them in parentheses to make sure you know that's an angle, because the angle goes after the cosine. That's a great question. Anybody else got anything? Okay, number 15 down here. We have one of those identities that says a tangent 80 minus tangent 5 and 1 plus tangent 70 tangent 25. So if you remember, this is the difference formula for tangents. Maybe I should go back and show it to you again. So when you're doing the tangents, this is positive, that's positive, this is negative, this is negative. So this is the one we're using right here. Okay, this is the one we're using. So I'm going to come back over here. And then I'm going to say that this, we know that this thing from that formula is going to be the tangent of 80 minus the 5. That's from the formula over there, because this is the U, this is the V, this is the U. Oh, this is, what's this going to be? 
But this is supposed to be a U, right? And this is B. So 80 minus 5 does give me 75, but what's wrong down here? They're not the same. So this U up here has to be identical to this U down here. So this is false. This is false because these numbers don't match up. So to make this true, you would want to make this 80 degrees and this 5 degrees. And now it would be true. So that would be how I would correct it. I just put in the right, the right U and the right V down here. Okay. So anytime a variable is a U, that means every variable U has to be the same. Okay, number 19 up here. Now this is none of the identities, is it? Right? We don't have an identity that says this, but what does 40 plus 17 equal? So would the cosine of that 57 be the same as that? Yes, this is true. This is true. Okay? All right, let's go on to that, those other problems over here. Uh, 32 here, sine of negative 3 degrees. Now we are supposed to read negative 3 theta. Okay. This one is a crazy problem, but I'm going to show, I'll show you guys. We're not going to have one this crazy, but I'm going to show it to you in a little while because it'll take too long to do and I don't want to put it on film that long. Um, and I also need to do it on a separate sheet of paper. What it wants us to do is get rid of the negative three in front. It just wants a regular old theta. Maybe I'll do it later, but I got to do it on a different page. All right, which one of our formulas has a two sine 45, cosine 45? Anybody know what, what that one's in? You see, we got a two sine u, cosine u. That's the double angle formula for this. See how that sine 2 and the sine u, cosine u match up with what that said over there? So this is sine 2u. Come back over here. So that means this is sine 2 and the u. Well, the u is that 45, right? So that's 2 times 45. Anybody know what 2 times 45 is? 90. So the answer to this would be the sine of 90 degrees. Y'all follow where that came from? From that other formula? Okay, 51. This is not one of the new ones. This is one of the old ones that we have already done. Ignore the 82 for now. What is that saying? Sine squared plus cosine squared, right? And normally, we let this be theta and this be theta. Well, that theta and that theta just means they have to be identical angles. That's what the theta means. So since these are both 82, what do we know sine squared plus cosine equals? That's just one. This is also one of the old ones. And we usually, again, this was theta and this was theta. What was sine over cosine? Tangent theta, right? But since they have 50 degrees there, this would be the tangent of 50 degrees. So that's the old quotient one. Question on that one? Okay, so I am going to go and try to do this problem for you right here because it's it is a little a little bit crazy. So it says the sine of negative three theta. Well, I'm half tempted to do this. I'm half tempted to make it a triple thing, but we're not going to. All right, so I'm going to rewrite this as the sine of negative 2 theta minus theta. We all see that negative 3 theta would equal this. Y'all see it? So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to do the difference formula for, for sine. So the difference for sine goes sine of the first angle times cosine of the second angle minus cosine of the first angle times sine of the second angle. So that's using the difference formula right there. We have a 
okay there? Now this next part is the, I'm gonna rewrite this part right here as the sine of negative theta minus theta times cosine of theta because I'm leaving this cosine here and I'm splitting that up into two again. This would be minus cosine of negative theta minus theta times sine theta. And maybe I should have told you this up here, this, this is the U, this whole thing right here is the U. And then this thing right here is the V. And I'm using the subtraction one because that's a minus. Down here, this is a new U. And this is a new V. This is a U and this is a V. So now what I gotta do is this is gonna be a distributive property out here. This cosine theta right there is gonna be times this difference of sine. So this is going to be the sine of negative theta Oops, I need another pencil here. You know, cosine theta minus cosine negative theta sine theta. I got minus, and then I'm going to come over here and do this one. This sine theta is going to be a distributive property here in a minute. So you see why I was uh, saying that this was going to be a long problem, I hope. So now we're doing a difference, that's a difference of cosine. So it goes cosine of the first angle, and cosine of the second angle, plus, because cosine changes its sine, sine keeps its sine the same, so it's plus, sine of the first angle, cosine of the second angle. Let me move this over. I'm sorry, sine of the second angle, not cosine. And then the whole thing is times sine theta. Okay, now back on the original identities. We have the sine of a negative theta. Okay, if you look back at your original ones, those are the even odd functions, the even odd identities. So we were supposed to, if you remember, the sine of a negative angle is equal to is equal to negative sine theta. Sine of negative theta is negative sine theta. I'm going to leave this cosine theta. And the negative cosine of a negative theta is the same as cosine of theta. And then again, the cosine of negative theta is the same as cosine theta. And the negative sine, uh, sine of negative theta is a negative sine theta for the same two reasons on the other side. We are not done yet. Now you see why I had to go on another sheet of paper. Now I got to distribute this cosine into here. So this is going to be negative sine cosine, oh, sorry, negative sine theta cosine squared theta minus cosine squared theta sine theta. And over here we got, I'm going to distribute this negative and that sine. So this is going to be a negative sine theta cosine squared theta. Okay, because that negative sine times that is this. Then a negative times a negative makes a positive. And then this is going to be sine cubed theta. Now I'm going to add like terms. Now this part I probably should have written differently. I put, should put the sine front. So I'm going to flip. Remember I did commutative property a minute ago? So I can flip the order of these two. So I'm going to put this. I'm going to flip these two around so they look like the other ones. And I hope you see that this term 
is identical to this term is identical to this term. Those are three like terms. Do you see them? They're like terms, so you can combine those. So our final answer here is going to be this sine cubed theta, this thing. And then there's one, two, three negative, so that's minus three sine theta cosine squared theta. Now, do I have, right here, do I have one trig function with one answer? With, with one angle. So I think that's what we're supposed to do on these is directions. Yeah, it says express in terms of one trig function and one angle. And again, you're not going to have any this hard on there. So what I have to do now is factor out a common sign in these two things. So I take a sign out to the middle or out to the front, and that is going to leave me sine squared theta minus three cosine squared theta. I want to get this. In, well, maybe even better to do it here. I think I'm going to do, I'm going to back that up. I'm not going to factor that out yet. I may in a minute. I want to get this cosine squared in terms of sine. So this is sine cubed theta minus three sine. And if you remember, cosine squared is one minus sine squared theta from our Pythagorean identities. So I'm going to distribute this to both of these. So this is going to be sine cubed theta minus three sine theta plus three sine squared theta. Oh, sine cubed theta, sorry. That one and that two makes us three of them. Now these two are like terms. So this is going to be four sine cubed theta minus three sine theta which that's fine for the answer if you wish. We could factor this out a whole bunch, but I'm not going to worry about it. So that's a pretty big mess. Okay. Has anybody else found any problem? Okay, here's 33. So it's got tangent again. This is U, this is V, this is U, this is V. I hope we see these match up nicely, unlike the true false one, right? So this is going to be one of our identities, and this is going to be the sum for tangent because it's a plus on top. So I'm going to go back and show you again. There's a plus on top. There's a plus over here. So when it's plus on top, it's plus here. So we've got to take these two things, this and this, and add them together to get that. So when I come back over here to this problem 33, this is going to equal the tangent, and the U angle is 3 pi over 4. And the V is pi over 4. So what's 3 pi over 4 plus pi over 4? That's going to be 4 pi over 4. And those fours reduce. So this answer should end up being the tangent of pi. Has anybody else got anything? Yeah. Um, I can't hear you. Okay, we're going to go back and do number what? Number two. All right, number two. These problems are wanting you to say if they're true or false, and if they're false, you have to make you have to make it a true statement. So what I'm looking over here is I got a sine cosine with a minus sign, and then a cosine sine. So I want to find over here on my identity sheet. Do I have a sine cosine? Do I have a sine cosine with a minus cosine sine anywhere? So when I come back over here and I look at this thing right here, I have a sine cosine with a minus sine and a cosine sine. You see how those line up with that one? So we're using this one, which is the difference for sine. So whatever the angle is here and here, we're going to take those from there. I'm going to stick them in this. So when I come over here and look at that, that means that this is supposed to equal the sine of 80 minus 10. What's 80 minus 10? And that's 70. So if it's true or false, if it matches up with our equation, then it's true. And then remember that 1 and 4, you can just do whatever they find so it's like. Okay. Is 3 any of those identities we had? 
The answer is no, it is not. So these are not equal. And you can check it on your calculator. You can take the sine of 40 and get a decimal number and sine of 50 minus sine of 10, get a decimal number, they're not equal. Okay? So what I'm gonna do is, is I'm gonna use, I'm gonna say this is false. And now I've got to change, I'm going to show you two ways you can write this to change it, okay? I'm going to use the difference because 50 minus 10 is 40. I'm going to use the difference of sine, which says sine of the first angle times cosine of the second angle minus cosine of the first angle sine of the second angle. That would make this thing true. And what I just did was use that same formula that's right here. I use this same formula right there, right there. Now there's a faster way you could do this. Is this 50 minus 10? Is 50 minus 10 40? So you could have also said, that, hey, this equals the sine of 50 minus 10 like that. And that would have made it equal to this one. Now this one we're adding, right? Yes. So you would have to come back over here and use this one where it's adding. Okay? Yes? You said you need to sign the 50 minus 10, so like put in a calculator or just to read it numbers. It does. Well, let's put it in my calculator and see. Because I don't think it does. So first of all, we want our calculator to be in degrees. Mine is, so I'm gonna hit sine of 40. One is sine 40, right? So sine of 40 is that decimal. If I take sine of 50 minus 10, that is not a different decimal. So I'm not sure I can come look and see what you typed in, but those are equal. Also, if I do the one, the other one I gave you, let me show you. If I do sine 50 cosine, oops, I got in the parentheses there, sorry. Cosine 10 minus cosine 50, sine 10. I get the same decimal that way too. So that just shows you all three of those are equal. Okay? So again, that you could write the true statement either the second line or, or I guess actually the third line on here. But you can use this or this to do that. Okay? Either one of those would be a true statement. Oh, I'm still filming. Anybody else got anything? <laughs> 